The cocktail world is filled with deliberation. It's what makes the things that we like to drink so good and so worth drinking. And today, I wanted to take a look at an Enzio variation I stumbled upon entirely by accident, well before I learned about the Enzoni, that has honestly been a really, really strong contender for my favorite cocktail ever. The Enzoni Variant Caloroso on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hi there, there, my name is Michael. I am a bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and today we are looking at a variation of this past Friday's cocktail, the Enzoni, the Enzoni Variant Coloroso. Now, that's a mouthful, but essentially it is a variation of a color, of a uh, Enzoni, rather, that is a little bit more positioned to resemble a Negroni and a gin sour from a traditional perspective, less from a deconstructed and then recombined perspective. So what's funny about this cocktail is that, first of all, I learned about it well before I ever did any reading or research on the Enzoni and where it came from, um, but also that it's not a variation of the Enzoni that is like super well known, uh, just one that is really, really good. <laughs> the Enzoni Variant Caloroso, which I'm gonna call a Caloroso Enzoni for the sake of simplifying it a little bit, is uh, a invention of the uh, cocktail blogger Gin, uh, I think it's Brick of Gin or Empire Gin Bricks, uh, Empire Gin of Bricks. They're, they're a Reddit and Instagram user, uh, and they share photos of cocktails and other uh, nerdy stuff alongside like Lego, which is their big thing, um, on Instagram and Reddit. And they have some of the most charming posts out there, honestly. I, I, I absolutely love everything they have up there. I stumbled upon it when they were shared by uh, another uh, another alcohol cocktail themed uh, blog on Instagram. I think it was about drinks and bars and I tried it because it sounded really good. And at the time I had April on the bar and I thought I need to give this a shot because it looks really delicious. And honestly, it is. I'm a huge fan of it. I'm ready to make one. Let's go ahead and make a Coloroso and zoning. So a Coloroso Enzoni is built on much of the base principle that in a regular traditional Enzoni is. It's a combination of a gin sour and a Negroni, but one that sort of chooses a different kind of Negroni to emulate. Traditionally, a Negroni is made with a sweet red vermouth, so like a Martini and Rossi red, which is kind of herbal yet still sweet, and Campari. Um, other versions of the Negroni have come out since then that use different bitter aperitifs like Aperol and different kinds of vermouth like Bianco vermouth, which is what the Enzoni Coloroso relies on in place of grapes and Campari. Aperol and Campari are both bitter uh, Italian aperitifs that taste like orange, but they present as different kinds of orange. Campari is sort of an earthy, bitter citrus peel, bergamot orange flavor. Aperol is more like candy oranges, like those candy orange wedges you can get at the store, but with a bitter, like lingering bitterness behind them similar to Campari. In place of grapes that appear in the regular Enzoni, we're actually going back to what uh, a Negroni does and using vermouth, in this case, Bianco vermouth, which is a sweet white vermouth that is herbal and botanical, uh, less, um, less thyme and rosemary, more juniper and honey kind of flavors. Um, normally when I make these, I use a Dolan uh, Blanc Vermouth, which is delicious. Uh, definitely go for it. You cannot go wrong there. Uh, but I'm going to give this a shot today and see how it goes. We also need gin, some simple syrup, and lemon juice, which I have right here. So let's go ahead and make an Enzoni Coloroso. Much like a regular Enzoni, this is a shaken cocktail, and it starts off with a very, very small amount of simple syrup. And in this case, actually, it is two bar spoons of simple syrup. In all fairness, I think it's entirely fair to say, um, you could probably cut back this, cut this back to one bar spoon, or uh, heck, just take it out entirely um, and build this kind of like a last word variation because the April and the Bianca Vermouth are both sweet. Um, they will present that way and then they'll be moderated by the lemon juice. Next up, like I said, we're gonna use three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. I have this freshly squeezed from our last episode on the Enzoni. And I'm just gonna pour this over the spoon to get some of that simple syrup off of there. Next up, I'm gonna crack our vermouth open. And, whew, that is not what I was expecting, wow. This is almost like peppercorn or strong grape, grape rinds, like the peel of a grape. Hopefully this doesn't suck. Uh, we're gonna do one ounce of this <laughs> into our cocktail shaker. Next up, we need uh, one ounce of our April. 
Lastly, we're gonna need just one ounce of gin. It's actually all the cocktail calls for, so we're gonna go ahead and add some ice to shake uh, this up and chill and dilute it. As always, we're sticking with our one cube hole and one cube cracked ethos. We're gonna cap this up, tap it down, and shake for 12 to 15 seconds to chill and dilute. For Coloroso, actually, because I've, I've built these before and I know how to present them, um, I actually use a single rocks glass. We're gonna put this over a whole rock rather than crushed ice. But one last shake to combine, pull that cap off and double strain into our single glass with a rock. What I think is so nice about this drink is the way that it presents this is really nice bright orange color. It is really difficult to accomplish without using Aperol. I love the way that that presents, and honestly, it was the thing that drew me to the cocktail. So, if you can't do April, might as well not do it at all. Now, assuming you have Lego minifigures, uh, you can attach to this in various ways. Uh, go ahead and garnish it with that, but otherwise, there actually isn't one for the cocktail. So, that is served forth as a Caloroso Enzoni. All right, with our station cleaned up, let's go ahead and give our Enzio Caloroso a taste. Man, that is so, so delightful. Wow. The Martini and Rossi Bianco Vermouth is really, really strong. It has a very, very prominent flavor that I think is definitely indicative of a lower quality product. Um, normally I would reach for Delon. They didn't have any at the store I went to, so I reached for something different and I know I shouldn't have, but it is what it is. Despite that, however, it's still exactly what it should be. This combination of gin botanicals and lemon sourness sweetened with a combination of an herbal aperitif like vermouth and a sort of bitter uh, citrus uh, aperitif like Aperol. And it kind of comes together into this presentation that is an adult version of like, I guess a screwdriver actually. <laughs> like tasting this, I would think, yeah, if I were to serve this at like any particular bar anywhere in the world, I'd probably serve it at a place that does brunch because the way it presents matches perfectly with what you would want to pair with like an omelet or a quiche or a, a bowl of fruit, you know, something bright and, and maybe a little heavy, but breakfasty and, you know, hearty and, ref and, and revitalizing, you know? It, it goes really well in that essence. And in terms of being an Anzoni variant, it does a really, really good job. You still get the complexity of that gin acting in the background. In this particular case, the vermouth is so loud that the gin botanicals are a little bit quiet, but that's on me for using Martini and Rossi. Um, yet, despite that, the April does still come through. It is still there and it's presenting more of its candy orange sweet flavor than it is its bitterness but there's still enough bitterness there to sort of keep it from being cloyingly sweet. And this is the reason why I think you can remove the simple syrup entirely, um, because those two those two ingredients are already sweet. Even if April is bitter, there's a lot of sugar in it. And the combination with a sweet vermouth like a Bianco is enough to make it balanced and fascinating and still really, really good without needing to be extra sweet. If you want to introduce people to bitter, uh, bitter aperitifs or bitter spirits, bitter cocktails in general, this is actually probably a good way to go just the same way that an Enzoni is, but as sort of like an Enzoni with training wheels. This sort of lighter, nicer, more candy flavored bitterness is more approachable, I think, to most people's palates, at least here in the US. And the people I know would like this a lot more than they would like the Enzoni, which I think I actually prefer. It's absolutely delicious and I think uh, Empire Br or Br Brick of Gin, excuse me, has done a great thing. Um, this is truthfully delicious. <laughs> well, that is that. That is the Enzio Caloroso. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode on a variant that I don't think many people know of, and I'm happy to share a little bit of information on, because honestly, I'm a huge fan of this, and I haven't had one in a while, so tasting it again is like, yeah, I know why I like this so much. This is really good. Doesn't beat an Enzoni for me, but is really, really goddamn close. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button down below and subscribe to catch the next one. I make a new video every single Friday and like this one, sometimes on Tuesdays. So 
go ahead and subscribe and click the bell to know when those come out. If you want a little bit of extra content here and there, whenever I can find the time to make it, go ahead and follow me on my socials appearing on the screen. Now, by this point, I have an Instagram, a Tumblr, a Reddit, a TikTok, and I'm trying to use all of them, and I'm probably not doing a very good job. Despite that, you can go there and you'll find extra little bits, uh, shortened version of these, versions of these videos uh, where I make cocktails, but a little bit faster so you don't have to sit through all the history. Uh, and we can chat. Maybe you can, if you want to chat, do it there. Send me a message on Instagram. I'll respond. If you got suggestions, send them there. I'll, I'll listen if you want to chat. So hit me up. Anyway, that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And please remember to drink responsibly. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you around. Bye-bye.